campsite maps, an old pipe, and a floral teacup. This heritage building slips you back into the time of the 1930s. The Parksville Museum, located at Craig Heritage Park, has eight moved on buildings where you can step back into time to experience life in this community from 1885 to 1940. The museum was actually started as a society in 1976. Um, the first building was moved on site shortly afterwards, and then the museum itself was opened in 1983. Oh. The museum holds an expansive collection of artifacts that illustrate the lives and activities of early settlers. Indigenous people have populated the area for thousands of years, with English settlers coming here around the 1870s to escape land restrictions of their homeland. It's what we call the history with a small H. It's not the big histories and the world wars. It's the histories of, of regular people that, that made our city the way it is and our district the way it is and really defined our identity. Rewind 100 years ago, the Oceanside community's identity was shaped by farmland. This entire region used to be the primary growing region for the whole island. And over the years, due to many, many reasons, development and the ease of import foods, the local food has become less and less important. But the museum is trying to change that. Three years ago marks the first farmer's market here, and every year it seems to expand. We're really poising the Parksville Museum to become the food hub for the region, where all of the people who are growing food and producing food and working for agricultural organizations can think of this place as a, as a central gathering place and we can all work together to make sure that we get more local food in this area. The museum hopes by learning about our agriculture history it will help guide the community to a more sustainable future. That's important because if we don't use our land for what it's intended to grow food we're going to lose that. If we don't, if we don't teach those skill sets to people, to younger people, to grow their own food. We lose those skill sets. If we don't keep producing food in a land where we can produce food, and the, and the key thing here is we actually can grow all year round here, and a lot of people don't know that. So that just helps everyone. To help educate the community about local food, the museum has started their urban farm school. The free workshops teach participants everything from composting to growing your food for profit. Carrie Powell Davidson says the museum is also trying to break down financial barriers to access local food. Parksville Museum Farmers Market just got approved to be in, involved with the coupon program and this, this is a huge step forward to the local food security that, that we as a food hub are striving towards. So if you think about local food, it's kind of been, a, over the past few years, a niche where it was expensive. And a lot of people on lower income couldn't afford to buy it. That is slowly changing. But in the meantime, the BC Farmers Association, Farmers Market Association, has come up with this coupon program. And what that does is it allows people who are on low incomes or fixed incomes to get a $50 coupon that they can use at the Parksville Museum Farmers Market. The market is currently partnered with the Parksville SOS to make this program happen and are currently looking for other nonprofits to help with this initiative. The Parksville Museum Farmers Market is open every Friday from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. until September 28th. The museum hopes more local urban farmers will participate in the marketplace. For GO on Shaw TV, I'm Rianne LaPlante.